Welcome to this radio channel and today we're going to talk about medium wave propagation. Medium wave propagation. Um, first of all, what is medium wave? Well, medium wave is what a lot of people call the AM band, but it's actually a little wider than that. Actual medium wave frequency range is from about 300 kilohertz, what some people would call long wave, but it's not yet. Uh, 300 kilohertz to 3 megahertz. So the bottom part of your shortwave radio that often goes to you know 1.82 megahertz. That's medium wave actually. So and the 160 meter band by the way is on a medium wave range. So medium wave or what people call the AM band because usually they are in contact with it on AM radios from you know f about 530 kilohertz all the way up to 1710 kilohertz is um, used a lot for broadcasting and the propagation characteristics of medium wave are uh, different than from the short wave side. We are now getting into much longer wavelengths typically at 1 megahertz that means that the wavelength is 300 meters that's you know pretty big antennas needed to have these uh, working. So basically medium wave shares two type of propagation characteristics and in the daytime it is usually um, ground wave propagation that means that the signal follows the ground and it's very different from where you live because where ground connectivity is very good a medium wave signal can easily just with ground wave in the daytime do through three four hundred kilometers on other places it will do less and that all has to do with what we call ground conductivity because uh, the medium wave frequency range has a very unique property propagating across the ground so for example if you live in an area where the ground is um, more of a um, say you're close to the sea and you have the ground that has a lot of uh, you know um, water is more humid and it increases connectivity of the ground so basically you can have medium wave signal actually go farther away uh, it has a lot of properties including easily goes through walls easily goes even through small mountains and so it is ideal for a quite a big uh, listening audience with one signal. Now, at night time, the ground waves change into sky waves because, well, the ground waves are still there, by the way, but the signal will also have sky wave properties like a shortwave radio signal because it reflects on the ionosphere. And now you're going to say, well, why doesn't it reflect in the daytime? Well, the same reason that prevents low shortwave frequencies like 49 meter band, 6 megahertz, from propagating pretty much in the daytime on long distance is the same reason, but in an effect that is even more pronounced in the medium wave band. So basically, in the daytime, that D layer here, that D layer that is formed, absorbs all of the sky wave. So it only has ground wave possibility for listening. But in the nighttime, with the disappearance of the D layer, the sky wave can actually reflect on the F layer of the uh, ionosphere. So that means your medium wave signal now has properties of a short wave signal. And basically you will receive stations from much farther away after sunset up to sunrise. And then as the sun starts rising in the morning, you lose the capabilities as the D layer rebuilds and get back into ground wave propagation. Now, a question that some people have asked, why do some medium wave stations have to reduce power at night? It all has to do with interference. Now, if you understand me right here, you understand that now because medium wave signals share shortwave radio similarities in reflecting on the ionosphere at night, you have guessed that these stations now go actually much farther away. 
And the problem is that the medium wave band or the AM band, broadcast band, is a very used band. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of stations crowded all across North America. Basically, there are a certain types of um, frequencies that are reserved. Uh, there are some frequencies that are called clear channel. This is, you know, powerhouse signals that are very, very strong and that keep that all the time. And basically, these clear channels will have fewer stations. They will be uh, farther apart as not to interfere with each other. But these are the frequencies that you usually tune on the medium wave band that are very clear. So if you listen to a station, say, uh, uh, Boston on 1030, or if uh, here in Montreal is heard very, very well, uh, you might have New York on 1130, uh, also 880 in New York, 770 in New York. These are all clear channels that are very, very um, well heard because there are fewer stations. On the other frequencies, there's a mishmash of all sorts of stations. Some frequencies are for low power transmissions, but some frequencies will have what's called, uh, basically, it's there, there'll be different power levels day and night. And the reason is because the stations are uh, more abund abundant on that frequency and often a little closer to each other, daytime doesn't cause any problem because typically they'll be out of the ground wave zone, so no stations really interfere with each other in the daytime. But as nighttime sets, if you keep the same power, it means that two signals will now interfere. And uh, there's a, a case here that was very uh, interesting um, of a station that's gone that uh, was on the 850 kilohertz range, CKVL. And that station here in Montreal, at night, a lot of people were complaining, hey, we don't hear it well at night. And that was because, one, they had to reduce power at night. Second, some of the farther away U.S. stations were actually sometimes even over overpowering the local signal of the station here. It was quite interesting to see. So to try to avoid or at least lower the probability of a station interfering with another one, they will have a lower nighttime uh, output of power. So by reducing power, say, from 10,000 watts to 1,000 watts, it reduces the amount of interference it will cause to other medium wave stations on the same frequency. The problem with that is that a lot of these stations, because they now go to 1,000 watts, are also more difficult to hear in the evening and the night, unfortunately. And there's even another kind of station, and we uh, had one here for a long time, in uh, just uh, south of Montreal and uh, I always remembered how I thought that was funny. We had a station here uh, in the uh, 80s that I remember shut down when the sun set and programs started again when the sun rose. That's another way to avoid interference but it's a much more drastic way meaning okay you're allowed to transmit at the daytime but at night you'll have to stop because you'll interfere with others. So that's another way of you know being very, very unusual in propagation. Uh, also, another way that medium wave stations will avoid interference, sometimes they will not necessarily change the power, but will change the pattern. What that means is that their antennas are slightly directional. And so basically a medium wave station at, in the daytime will transmit say omnidirectionally or through a certain area, target area. Um, you know, sometimes transmitters are very often, transmitters are just outside the city, but they're meant for the local city. So the medium wave signal will be kind of transmitted to towards the city, for example. But at nighttime, because that pattern might interfere with some other stations, they might have to shift what direction and how or how they tr broadcast their signal so that the change in pattern will lower the amount of interference that it causes to other stations. So that's basically the idea behind uh, medium wave. Ground um, signal or ground wave is dominant in the daytime. And the lower you go in frequency, by the way, 
the more important the ground wave domination will be. Uh, so it means that a station on 600 kilohertz with 50,000 watts will probably be heard on ground wave a little farther away than a station that's at the high end of the medium wave spectrum, say 1650 kilohertz, because it you know, changes slightly the properties. The higher you go, the more the signal res res will resemble a short wave signal. The lower you go, the more it will resemble a long wave signal. So, uh, and of course, we'll have a little lecture on long wave propagation also. So, I hope you enjoyed these little videos explaining um, the why of these things. And um, basically, wrong picture here, sorry. <laughs> and uh, basically, just remember that if you want to really DX, but you know, I, I call it DX all the time because I call daytime radio listening on medium wave still DX. It's an interesting DX because you know it's ground wave from stations and it's it's kind of cool you know if you you try to listen to a ground wave station that's 300 kilometers away it's really hot but you know what it's just that uh, basically you will um, want to DX probably much more at night and because it has shortwave probabilities or capabilities um, like well, of course, medium wave signals of high power can actually propagate across very long distances, more than, you know, a few thousand miles. Uh, I remember in the 80s when noise was lower for me, I would hear Norway on, I think it was 14, I'm trying to remember, but I'm not sure the exact frequency, but something like, oh, 1321 or something like that. There was Norway, I remember hearing, uh, I, I heard Algeria once, um, I remember hearing Bermuda. I think it was on 535 kilohertz at the bottom of the medium wave band. So, you know, you can DX very far away stations if you have proper equipment, good loops to uh, null out signals from local stations. So, um, hope you enjoy this little lecture on medium wave propagation. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and hopefully you enjoy my videos. Thanks for watching.